What's going on guys, Bobby from Skybrows here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use the tools inside of our 3D model viewer. So, the first thing you want to do is log in to Skybrows, and once you're in there, you can see some of the 3D models around the scene. Of course, you can just hover over one of the 3D models and the thumbnail will play. So, I'll just click on view model for now, and you get a good amount of tools right here. So, I'm going to go over all the tools sequentially and show you guys what you can do with a 3D model because making the 3D model is really easy, now it's time to unlock the power of the 3D model itself. So the first thing you can do is annotate. This allows you to put measurements or names into your measurements. So you just click right here. Let's just write good boy. So this is a 3D model of Boston Dynamic Spot made by the rep who's never flown a drone or made a 3D model before. So here is Spot right here, sitting down, laying down like a good boy. So, of course, you can also move this annotation around. Now, this is really good for real-life use cases, such as, like, officer-involved shootings, if you want to look at shell casing, label evidence markers, for accident reconstruction, uh, if you want to look at skid marks, yaw, point of uh, impact, and all that good stuff. Next tool right here, we've got distance. This is uh, this allows you to take measurements inside the 3D model. All of our models are accurate down to the centimeter. So what you want to do is left-click, left-click, and then to exit out, you can right click or you can continue to make measurements. In this case, I'm just going to exit out. After that, you've got area. So with area, it's the same exact workflow. You just left click, left click, just keep left clicking until you're done. And then you right click out. Now you got the area of whatever area that you've selected as well. Height, wouldn't recommend it. Uh, it's not very accurate. So we recommend using the profile panel and I'll talk a little bit more about this. Uh, this is our slope map tool, and this gives you much better height than everything else. Over here, we've got a conversion, so you can either switch between metric or imperial. Let's stick with imperial for now. Of course, there's a little bit more. Uh, this is our heat map tool, available for upgrade, right here. When you click it, it gives you a heat map of the entire scene, and you can see the brighter the color, uh, the, the higher the elevation. And that looks like an interesting arm, Spot. Nice arm. Moving on, you can toggle it on and off just like that. And you got the profile panel right here. What you do is with this red dot, you left click, left click, and right click out. Now you have the highest points of the 3D model in a nice little tool right here. So if you want to figure out altitude uh, or the height, of uh, spot right here. You can do some quick mental math. Uh, 0.76 feet at the highest point and negative 0.56 feet at the lowest point. So that's like uh, 1.8 feet or so, if my math's not wrong. And uh, this gives you a much better height approximation. It's uh, only off by one or two inches right here because everything uh, with these drones are using is uh, relative. We can't get the prox the exact height, but you get a pretty good estimation of the height just right there of spot. Mm. Let's see, and to exit out, you just press the X button. And of course, going back to the slope map tool, one thing before I forget is that you can move this in real time. So this updates in real time just like that. You can see the slope of this uh, parking lot is actually trending downwards. So for instance, uh, if there's a hazmat situation, the runoff is going, uh, the runoff starts right here. You can already see that uh, the runoff will go downwards like this. So it's really useful to have as well. Now, let's start cluttering this 3D model viewer with a bunch of measurements. So sometimes your 3D models might look like this, where you've got a bunch of measurements around the scene, everything looks cluttered, you can't see spot at all. What can you do? Well, right here, if you click the triangle and go into distance, you can choose to hide or show certain measurements. If I want to hide the area, just to show the good boy, I can. Or if I only wanted the area, I can just like that. Or if I wanted to hide all the measurements, I can, just by clicking these boxes. Or if you want to delete the measurements, you have a few options of doing so. You can uh, delete by hovering over the point, and it'll delete either the entire point, or uh, if you wanted to delete just one point right here, this point in the left corner, you can as well, just like that. Or if you want to just clear the scene, you can do that as well. The clipping tool is really cool. Uh, I'm going to go to a different 
3D model and show you a uh, real life use case of clipping right here. So this is an officer involved shooting. And if you wanted to get, say, the cross section of the car, it's an isolation tool. So this allows you to go into the scene right here, click clip, and whatever's highlighted will get clipped. So you can zoom out to make the box a little bigger. So in this case, let's uh, clip up until the mannequin right there. And afterwards, you can click inside, which only shows that cross section of the car. This really helps you focus on the scene because you already have the 3D model of the scene. You don't need other stuff in the background to distract you, or you can click outside, and this gives you the other cross section of the car. So you can see the mannequin by itself, as well as the cross section. Of course, this updates just like that. So you can update it to be higher or lower. Let's just get a quarter section like that and zoom out. And right click to hide that box and you get that tool right there and of course this doesn't change the 3d model uh, you can't edit the 3d model because that breaks um, chain of custody so this is just changes the viewer itself so you can just click X and get rid of that tool right there moving forward we've got the screenshot button uh, this essentially helps you save uh, your 3d model into a nicely packaged JPEG for um, your case file. So right here, by the way, this is a two by two square. It's always good to have known measurements inside of the uh, 3D model to prove accuracy. Our models have gone through court. However, they've all been settled outside of court, which is a shame. Let's annotate some more stuff. Gun, uh, let's see, there we go. Let's see, nine millimeter casing right here. And then, um, Right here. So you got all the measurements, the annotations, now you want to toss this into the case file. What can you do? Well, you can right here, write a case number, click generate, and what happens is it generates a high resolution JPEG file. And you can see by clicking on it, it takes a screenshot of your current view. On the bottom, it's got your case number for easy filing purposes. You got SkyBrows right here and right here, and Made in USA. So now you can just, uh, this is saved directly to your downloads folder, so you're able to turn that into a case file all together. And yeah, that shows just about everything inside of the measurement tool. Um, this allows you basically to get all sorts of information of your 3D model. Because it's really easy to make 3D models, but uh, sometimes uh, with all these tools it might be confusing. So we decided to build a training session on the basics of measurements with Skybrass. Thank you for your time.